Hey there folks, my name is Luke. Welcome to this episode of the Outdoor Gear Review where tonight I'm going out for a wintertime stealth camp overnight adventure. Now, it is 6 o'clock p.m. As you can see, it's getting pretty dark. We have roughly 15 minutes of light left. It will take me roughly 30 minutes to get to where I am going to start this adventure. Now, this adventure is going to be different. Now, with the last stealth camp overnight adventure, that was a very high stress, high risk trip. I mean, the entire time there was that high risk that I was going to get caught. Now with this trip here, the risk is very low, but we have to get started on the adventure, on the trail, or should I say road. I will tell you more about this trip once we get there. Now, as you guys can see there, it is 32 degrees right now. That's not too bad, that's pretty warm actually. But let me tell you folks, there are some big changes in the works. By morning, it is supposed to be zero degrees Fahrenheit and it is supposed to be very windy. Now, there is a snow component to this adventure. How much snow, I really don't know. I'm going to say one, one to three inches is the best forecast, and that's a pretty poor forecast. One to three inches, who knows, we shall see. No matter what, by morning, it should be a winter wonderland, no doubt. A 32 degree drop in 12 hours, that's pretty impressive factor in the strong winds by morning we're talking about wind chills around negative 10 degrees Fahrenheit maybe even a little bit lower than that Folks, I've made it to my destination. I need to get this light off. The odds of getting caught here are pretty slim, but this is a pretty popular thoroughfare, basically at the base of this mountain. Now, what we are doing is hopping onto the road here. Right over here, the road is barricaded because it is closed because of snow and ice. Now, we are heading up to the top of this mountain. Essentially, we are going over a mountain pass. We're going to get off of that head up atop of another mountain and keep on going. We will go until we decide to quit. Uh-oh, gotta turn this off. So as you can see there, people are crossing through. I need to switch my boots, get my pack on. Let's do this. Gosh, there are people everywhere. We gotta get going. All right, everybody, let's do this. I gotta get across this road. That's the blockade. Here comes a car. <laughs> okay, I had to run back to the car so that I'm not seen here. Now's my chance. I gotta go. Once I get away from this intersection back here. I'll do more filming. So, hiking along right now on the road. No ice, no snow at our present position. I just heard something big go busting through the woods, probably a deer. Well, I'm at the point now where the odds of getting caught by anyone are extremely low. There's no one out here. Now, even still, I really don't like having this flashlight on. With a stealth overnight adventure, lights out as much as possible. You know, if I get caught out here, I wouldn't be in trouble or anything like that. <sighs> but I would have some explaining to do. Again, folks, it is not illegal what I'm doing. I am not trespassing or anything like that. When you stealth camp, you have to be smart. Oh my God. Guys, look at this. I now understand why the road is closed. Look at that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is where we're headed, up the mountain. This is the way that we came. This pass here is not scraped. 
it is not maintained in the winter it's too long it's like 400 miles long it would take an unbelievable amount of resources to maintain this road the clouds are definitely coming in pretty thick we are leaving civilization behind nothing at all nobody's out here it's just us it's just us and the weather and the animals I tell you everyone the temperatures are perfect right now my face is cool my body is warm not hot my hands are lukewarm perfect absolutely perfect now the winds are picking up some it's definitely breezy we will have to keep the winds in mind tonight when it comes to setup As an update, we're about a mile and a half in on our adventure here. So far, so good. Gosh, it is gorgeous, guys. Check that out. We are living free, everyone. Living free together. Out for an adventure together, you and I. As it stands, we are going this direction. Straight up. Now folks, I know this really doesn't do anything as far as scale goes, but that is the town that we left behind. As you can see here, I've made it a pretty good distance with my hiking. I'm getting pretty close to the point where I'm going to get off this road and start hiking some trails. So as an update, I made it to the top of the pass here. Not on top of the mountain, big difference. I guess you could say I'm on top of this mountain, but that doesn't mean a whole lot. I am about to get off this road and hop on an old logging road. Very, very good progress so far. Oh yeah. I've been hiking up this mountain here, up this pass, for probably an hour and a half. Now it is time to go this way. Now this trail goes for at least five miles. I do not believe that I will go to the very top. I do not want to go above the tree line with a windstorm coming in. So I may hike up, I don't know, maybe two miles or so, then assess the situation, maybe find a place to camp at. Now there is a bald up here, but I don't want to camp on it because of the wind. So I will need to find some sort of sheltered area. I need to find a natural wind block. That's the goal right now. Let's get to it. Now take a look at this over here. You can see the city lights, but that looks like it may be snow. Looks like there may be a snow wall there. Folks, this is such a beautiful place. I mean, it is simply gorgeous. You really don't have to worry about not seeing much tonight because tomorrow you will see everything covered in snow. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully so. You know how it goes with these forecasts. You wake up in the morning, I don't know, it's 80 degrees. As I was walking along here, this gigantic owl came out of the tree and flew right over my head. He might be up here, let's look for him. Wow, he was awesome. He definitely flew over here somewhere. Wow, there he is. Can you guys see him? He's right there in that tree. So guys, check him out. That is my guardian. Wow. Hey, buddy. Hello, my friend. Permission to camp with you tonight. So guys, this is the guardian of the forest. Wow. Isn't he cool looking? You are awesome. What do you think, my friend? Is it going to snow tonight? I hope so. Okay, so how awesome is that? My buddy, he's up there in the tree. We shall let him be. See you later, my friend. Enjoy the snow. Okay, well, 
I have to admit, that right there made the night 100% worth it. <laughs> I'll give you guys a 360, let you all know what my surroundings look like. Deep into the forest right now. So far, it seems like it's just you, me, and our owl friend on this adventure. The owl seems like it may be following us, actually. It flew over my head again, went up into a tree. I've lost it at the time being, but it's still here with us. Guiding the way, I think. Guiding the way. This would not be a good place to camp. Too many fallen trees, too much damage. With the winds picking up later tonight and in the morning, this place would be a death trap. I need to find a good balance of protection and openness, just in case the winds really get strong. All right, guys, there are a bunch of deer right over here. I spooked them when I walked up there, but let's go see if they're still around. There's one. You can see the eyeballs of another back there. So check this out, everyone. We've come out to the bald here. Uh, I see that tree line right there. I'm thinking maybe, just maybe, we could find a place to put our tent over there. Wow, that's a big old buck. Gosh, he is huge. <laughs> wow, that's awesome. Well, anyways, I'm thinking that bunch of trees over there will be the perfect spot to put my tent. Should block some of the wind, not all of it. You can see a couple snowflakes in the air. It is starting to snow now. This is what I'm thinking. Right here in this clearing, I think is going to be absolutely perfect. The wind is being blocked by these trees over here and there's this hump here. So in theory, we should be down a little bit lower, blocked by the wind somewhat. I mean, folks, I don't think we could find a better spot. Nice and flat, somewhat protected. We could stare at the city lights until the snow gets heavy. The first thing that I'm going to do is switch over to a headlamp. I no longer need this flashlight. Now I carried this flashlight for a very specific purpose and that was instant control. If I needed to turn it off, I wanted to do so like that. If I wanted high, I wanted it like that and so on. I didn't want to be fumbling around on top of my head, you know what I mean? This right here is my tent bag. Nice and small, oh yeah. Here's my setup. That is the Go Light Shangri-La 3 tent. It is simply the fly. I didn't bring the body. Plenty of room for myself and my gear. Finally, I got the tent up, got my bedding done. I am starving. It is definitely time to eat. It's snowing just a little bit and it's roughly nine o'clock now. So we have definitely spent a number of hours making it up on top of this mountain. And folks, it is getting cold. It is getting cold. I have my trusty old mammoth jacket on. This baby is thick. It is really old. I've had it forever. It's torn up in more ways than you can imagine. <laughs> but it just keeps on going. So, before I start up dinner, let me show you my setup for the night. So come on inside. All right, so. Here I have two sleeping pads, one thin one. This is a German military sleeping pad. And on top of that, I have the Thermarest X-Therm. So here's my sleeping bag. I have a bivy on top of that. The sleeping bag is from Golight. That is the Adrenaline Zero Degree sleeping bag from Golight. That's pretty old. The bivy is from Mammut. 
and this will keep me a little bit warmer and it will block out the snow if it comes rushing in from underneath the tent tonight. This is the Flex Capacitor backpack from Sierra Designs. So far, I'm very impressed with it. It is time to make some dinner. I'm going to make it right here. I'm gonna use my tent as a wind block, as a wind screen. Now, for this trip, I have a piece of military surplus. This is the Swiss military, oh, I can't remember the name of this thing. The M71 stove, something like that. I really can't remember. I'll flash it on the screen for you. It's an alcohol-based stove, an alcohol gel, and it rules. Simply light this up, just like so. All right, as you can see, it is burning away. Now for dinner tonight, I have Mountain House. This is Mexican style rice and chicken with tomato, peppers, and olives. Here in a couple of minutes, the water will be done. Good, 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 good. It is starting to snow a little bit now. How about that? The temperature is dropping, it is cold. I'd say right now, it's probably in the low 20s. It is about to get a whole lot colder. <laughs> I love this spot. This is awesome. Perfect timing, the snow's coming down now. Dinner's cooking. You know, I have the city lights. Man, life is pretty good. Mm, 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 mm. I would give just about anything to have a fire tonight, but when you're stealth camping, you do not have fires. That is a rule that I live by when it comes to stealth camping. If you want to get caught, start a fire. Mm -mm -mm. Trying to think of what story to tell with dinner tonight. So many stories, and the question is, what have I told, what haven't I told? <laughs> okay, I have a story for you. I will go ahead and tell you now. Now, you all know, with the channel here, I have a small series which I call Moose and Guns. Ever so often, we take Moose, which is my 1986 military cut fee truck, and we go to Lone Wolf Mountain. And we usually bring along a firearm and do some shooting. Well, here on YouTube, they're cracking down on conservative views somewhat. So, oftentimes, those videos do not get monetized, which is a real shame. This sort of treatment happens with just about all Second Amendment channels, gun channels, and so on. The fact that Google doesn't like this makes me want to do even more of them. <laughs> so look forward to more moose and guns in the future. Now that really doesn't have anything to do with the story, but I wanted to bring that up. I appreciate you all so much for your support through Patreon and so on. It is appreciated. Talking about firearms and so on. I can't remember what video it was, but I was talking about my neighbor, who is very eccentric. You know, I was doing some shooting at my dad's place years back she comes down the hill just screaming and crying you know ah, she can't stand the noise and whatnot i unload the rifle i talk to her she's crying she's screaming she's so upset she hates guns and everything they stand for and so on we talk for maybe two hours two hours okay by the end of that two hours she's calmed down she understands why i do it i get her to shoot that rifle you know, I thought everything was fine. She was fine. We ended everything on a great note. She went home. I continued to fire and I go home. Like three hours later, I get a knock on the door and it's the sheriff's department. She had called the sheriff's department after talking to me <laughs> and they had to make a house call. Can you guys believe that? That's pretty funny. <laughs> After shooting the gun herself, she called the sheriff's department. Mm -mm -mm. Oh man, that is good. Now, of course, the sheriff's department, they were very cool. Heck, I know most of those guys. I went to school with them. In a way, she did us a favor because we were able to catch up. Fast forward, who knows how many years, she loves to shoot as well. And she will oftentimes come down and shoot with me. How about that? I have crawled inside of the tent because it is cold out there. The winds are picking up just a little bit and 
It's snowing pretty good actually. It's coming down. It's not super heavy by any means. It's laying. The main culprit is the cold. It is cold. Luckily this bag feels super hot. <laughs> oh man. I tell you, this is a trip that I've wanted to do for a very long time. And I am so glad to be out here with you all. This is a place that I've wanted to stealth camp at for a long time. I can't imagine a better night for doing this. Plus, I have my good friends with me. We are out on an adventure. Time for dinner. Mm -mm -mm. That is good. It is always the same when you go backpacking. You know, you hike, you get hungry, you cook your meal, it's super hot, you burn your mouth, the end. I have this app on my phone here called Carrot Weather. It is an interesting app. It does a pretty good job when it comes to forecast and temperatures and radar and all that stuff. The funny thing about it is that it's super fouled mouth. Like this thing called me like an effing idiot <laughs> earlier today, I kid you not. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to fire this up. Let's see what it has to say. Summoning weather. It's freezing right now. We need global warming. <laughs> that is true. I'm tired of talking. It's dinner time. I'll bring you all back in a little bit. You know, it just dawned on me that some of you may not know what stealth camping is. It's also known as wild camping. Now, stealth camping is the act of secretly camping in a public or private area and moving on in the morning. It can be done illegally or legally. I prefer legally. Don't do anything illegal. That's my best advice. Stealth camping is all about getting into the wilderness, camping out, staying quiet, not being seen, not being heard. It's a lot of fun. You can make it into a game, just like I have with this adventure here. I'm on top of a mountain. There's snow falling. I can see the city lights. Wow. Later on tomorrow, I will go over some rules when it comes to stealth camping for you all. As an update, gosh, is it cold. It is cold. I am pretty much ready for bed now. I've been brushing up. I was going to take you all for a hike on top of the mountain here, show you guys the city lights, but that would be a very bad idea. The cloud level has dropped down significantly and you can't see hardly a thing outside. It's snowing, it's super hazy, foggy, uh, basically everything is icing up right now. When I was brushing my teeth, I walked off about 25 feet and I couldn't even see the tent. I am definitely not walking away from this tent. I probably couldn't find it again. So, as you guys can hear, the winds are picking up. Oh, yeah. It is going to be a windy night. All right, let's take a look outside real quick, then it's time for me to go to bed. I'm ready to get my hand warmers, put them in my gloves, put them in my socks, and just kick back, relax, get some good sleep. I'm sure that the winds are going to pick up and getting sleep may be difficult, but for now, I'm gonna try to get as much sleep as possible. Tomorrow we have to hike out of this mess. That's going to be an adventure all by itself. Plus, you guys will get to see everything. Ha, huh, how about that? What a change, right? Take a look at that, folks. You really can't see anything. Well, I have to put my long johns on now, and that kind of sucks because I have to take my pants off. Burr, it's going to be cold. Eric, my friend, thank you so much for the long johns, buddy. Everything inside of the tent is now beginning to ice up, not only because I'm breathing inside of this tent, but because the cloud level is so low. I just took off my wet socks, putting on my dry socks, about to put some hand warmers in those socks. I don't believe that I sweated too much inside of my boots, so I'm not going to worry about them freezing. If I was, I could put them inside of a, the sleeping bag stuff sack and put them inside of my sleeping bag to keep them warm. That would prevent them from freezing. Right now, I'm just simply going to cover them up so snow doesn't blow inside of here and go inside of my boots. Taking off this toboggan, replacing my thin toboggan with a thick, very warm toboggan. I am now officially ready for bed. And that is that. <laughs> Wish me luck. I'm going to sleep. I will see you guys in the morning unless something crazy happens. Good night, guys. Oh, man. Whew. Feels good. You know what? With the temperatures going down to roughly zero, my face will definitely get cold, get wet with moisture and so on.
Ha! Ah, that's what I needed. Good night. Good morning, everybody. Whew. How's everybody doing this morning? As for myself, I'm doing pretty good. It is wicked cold. Um, luckily, I am super warm inside of my setup here. It's a pretty windy morning. It's still snowing pretty good. How much snow we have, I really have no idea. I can tell you that the tent here is just covered in snow though. And that's a good thing because it's actually blocking out a lot of the wind. Ooh, man. <laughs> yeah, last night was pretty awesome. Fell asleep pretty quick, slept great. I mean, I'm so warm. The hand warmers that I put in my socks made a world of difference. I mean, they're toasty warm. That means I'm warm. It's been a good night. Very quiet, very peaceful. You can hear the wind blowing high up. It's a little bit after seven o'clock in the morning. Now, since this is a stealth camp overnight adventure, that means that I have to get out of here. With it being light outside, I need to break down camp. I need to start moving. That is the nature of the game. I'm going to get up, go use the bathroom. <sighs> and get some coffee going. Luke needs coffee. Oh. Let's see what it looks like outside. Okay, so check out that view, everyone. What an amazing place to camp at. Last night before I went to bed, I saw our owl friend up in this tree. He was hanging out with us. So this is what my world looks like this morning. Cold, windy, Gorgeous. <laughs> it is pretty dang cold though. So as far as snow goes, maybe an inch and a half, two inches at the very most. No big deal really. Nothing to write home about. Just enough to make everything nice and pretty. Guys, it is coffee time. Fogged up that camera, dang it. Now with the temperatures being so cold, I really need to pay attention to my fingers and my toes. I have plenty of material to cover exposed skin, but it's important to make sure that my fingers don't get too cold. Frostbite is a real possibility at temperatures this cold. Luckily, I have some hand warmers, I have lots of gloves, so I will be staying toasty warm. Oh man, that feels Awesome. So good. <laughs> so good. Hmm. Now folks, I see that I made a mistake last night. I told myself that I needed to put my water inside of my sleeping bag and I forgot. Check that out. <laughs> and that was almost frozen solid. In a few more hours and it will be. With the snow piling up around the bottom of this tent, it's at least 10 degrees warmer in here. I mean, it's absolutely comfortable. I could sit here outside of there. It's not comfortable at all. I'm making my coffee right here inside of this. I'm using my alcohol stove. I have the door open, air is coming in. Should be good to go. Come on, baby. There we go. <laughs> Not getting much water out of that. My wife says, good morning, it is snowing like crazy. Hope you slept well. Negative two up here. Snow accumulations two to six inches are possible today. So it sounds like it's gonna keep on snowing. I really don't know. I mean, we have like two inches now, but that's a far departure from six. It is coming down though. <laughs> The walk out of here is going to be awesome. It is going to be awesome. 
<laughs> my coffee is pretty much done. I like my coffee lukewarm, you know what I mean? I want to drink it. I don't want to just sit there and look at it. My phone is blowing up. My brother wants to know how I'm doing. Everybody wants to know if I'm still alive. It's funny, I was talking to my dad yesterday. I was like, oh yeah, dude, I'm gonna go up on top of this mountain and camp out. And he's like, that sounds like fun. Have a great time. No question as to whether I should do it or not. He already knows that if it's going to snow, I'm out in it. I've been like that since I was a kid. My brother, he sent me a funny picture here. Does anybody recognize that guy? <laughs> That's really funny. Hey there, dude. Good morning, period. I love you, buddy, period. I am nice and warm. About to have some coffee, period. How are you, question mark? Hey there, honey. Good morning, period. I love you so very much, period. How are you feeling, question mark? Okay, so back to the coffee. Coffee, coffee, coffee. I have this, um, I'm not sure what this is. Espresso or something, I don't know. I have something fancy. I'm going to take this and I'm going to mix it with Folgers, oh yeah. Funky Folgers puts hair on your face. Funky Folgers puts hair all over the place. Don't sue me, <laughs> Folgers. After I finish up coffee, I am heading out. It is time to get off this mountain. Oh man. Oh jeez. My legs, my bones, my back. Yum, that is awesome. Got something nice and warm to hold on to. I get to stare out the door here, watch it snow, and it is absolutely pouring the snow right now. Yeah, so I will finish up my coffee. I may grab a bite to eat. I'm going to break everything down, start heading back. It's about a two hour hike, plus I have to go a little bit slower, I assume, because of the snow. The road might be icy, I don't know. Look what I just found. Brown sugar cinnamon pastry crisp. Ah, uh, yeah. So this is how you do it. You take a bite. Mm. That is freaking awesome. It has taken me a while to get everything broken down. Um, I'm having issues with my camera because of the cold. I'm having issues with my body because of the cold. That's how it goes. You know, when it's this cold, when it's down to zero and colder, everything's just compounded. Everything becomes harder more difficult, but luckily just as much fun. Maybe even more so. All right, we will try this again. That is the third battery that's completely dead and it's just because it's so wicked cold. Everything's just dying super fast. I don't even know if you guys saw me doing the breakdown process, but that took Took a while. The stakes were frozen into the ground. Some were easier to get out than others. Ah, it's pouring the snow. It's beautiful. I have a pocket full of batteries trying to warm them up. Let's get out of here. Leaving no trace at all except for a pile of snow. That is it. Hopefully once I get into the woods, that will block some of this wind because it is bitter. You know, so far this trip has panned out exactly the way that I wanted it to. Even with the snow, it's exactly what I expected. Almost nothing, blowing in the air, cold as hell. I love it guys, I love it. This is freedom. This is absolute freedom. This is the definition of being alive and I'm glad that I was able to share it with you all. Completely sideways snow. What a gorgeous place to spend the night. Visibility is pretty poor right now because of the snow. The camera does a good job of kind of clearing it up, but visibility isn't very far. You know, if I knew for a fact that the road was covered in snow, 
I could have brought my skis and we could have skied down to the bottom. <laughs> that would have been pretty cool. Instead of taking like an hour and a half to hike down, get down in like 25 minutes, something like that. <laughs> you may not be able to tell by my face, but my body is on fire. This jacket is amazing. So far when it comes to tracks, nothing but deer. Lots and lots of deer actually. They came through likely about 40 minutes ago. I would show you what we're walking into, but I can't do it. I have to keep the lens of this camera clear. As soon as moisture sticks to that and melts just a little bit, it will be very difficult to keep that thing clear for the rest of the day. So I always have to have it facing away from the snow as much as possible. Wow, this is gorgeous. <laughs> gorgeous. So as you can see there, it is very windy, almost to the road now, and it looks like the road is pretty clear. So check this out, the road is clear. This is where we're going, not so clear. We have a couple of miles to go on the road, then it's to the car, mission accomplished. Hiking on this road here, all by myself, this is pretty cool. I wish I had some skis though, big time. Right there, there's my owl friend. Hey buddy, good morning. Thank you for letting me stay in your forest last night. Goodbye, guardian. Folks, you can't tell me that that isn't one of the coolest things ever. <laughs> he looks like he's following me this morning. That is my guardian, I believe. Thank you. Wow, that's awesome. <laughs> wow, that is so cool, guys. That's so cool. That's what getting outside is all about. It's all about turning off the computer, turning me off, turning off the television, getting out and living having real experiences. You will completely forget about the movie that you watched the other night in a matter of months. Something like that you will never forget. That really has made my day. The battery's dead, the screen's covered in ice. It's a perfect day. I apologize if the screen is smudged or whatever, but there's a coating of ice on this. When I pointed the camera up at the owl, some snow got on the lens. And from there, it's kind of spidered out. That is how it goes. Now, down here at this lower elevation, there's actually more snow. Now, of course, part of that is the fact that this isn't being as wind blown as it was up there. If it was any deeper, I would put my gators on. Now, before I get done with this adventure, there goes the owl again. <laughs> I told you all that I would tell you or share with you some stealth camping tips. First off, do not trespass. Leave no sign. Build no fires. Stealth camping is all about being hidden, not being seen, not being heard. Do not go stealth camping in your bright or red tent. That's a great way to get caught. Now, I used a green tent for this adventure. It would have been better if I had a white tent, but there aren't many of those out there. Luckily, the green blended in with the pine behind me perfectly. Never put your campsite by a trail. Always go up above the trail. Humans spend most of their time looking down at the ground, not looking up. Make your camp for a night, not for the day. As soon as the sun comes up, it's time to pack up and move on. Moving on with the tips, something very important to keep in mind is that you are your own rescue. You know what I mean? If you are out stealth camping, that means no one's going to be looking for you. No one is going to easily find you. So if you have an issue, it is your responsibility to handle it. Next, do not set up camp next to a creek or a river just in case it floods. It doesn't even have to rain where you are for it to flood. It could always rain a couple of miles upstream and so on. For the last rule, set up camp when it's getting dark. 
don't do it when it's nice and light out. You do it once the sun is going down. Remember, it's all about being stealthy. Let's say that someone saw my tracks here in the snow. <laughs> walk down, drop camera, go back, film it, place the camera over there, walk back, walk forward, come back. By simply looking at the tracks in the snow, they probably thought that I've lost my mind. That hypothermia has kicked in. What do you think? Whoa, guys. As I was hiking down the road here, I heard a bobcat in the woods. <laughs> I can't tell how close or how far away it is, but there's only one thing that sounds like a bobcat, and that's a bobcat. There it was again. <laughs> see, I wonder if it's up in a tree there. I wouldn't be able to see it from here. <laughs> how awesome, how awesome. I guess that's the next guardian, the bobcat guardian. Hello guardian, permission to pass. Bobcats, I'm not worried about no bobcat. A mountain lion, that's something else. Bobcat, no. I have heard of bobcats attacking hunters and so on. Very rare, but it does happen. All right, folks, this trip is coming to an end. About a mile to go. All right, so check this out, folks. I'm hiking along, and all of a sudden, a Toyota Tacoma comes flying up this mountain, okay? The driver sees me, skirt, stop, back up, peels out, and takes off as fast as they could. Somehow, they got around the barricade. I'm pretty sure we will figure out how they did it by following their tracks. <laughs> they must have thought I was a park ranger or something because they hauled ass out of here. <laughs> Stopped here, backed up, couldn't make it, backed up again, and then took off. That is hilarious. <laughs> Great minds think alike, I suppose. I'm out here, I'm doing it on foot, they were in a car, we're both guilty. <laughs> You know, I wonder what the odds are of following this guy's tracks all the way back to his house. <laughs> I bet he doesn't live too far from here. He's probably done that before. Almost back to the barricade now. Still peppering it down. Whew. My body is warm. My face is really keeping me cool. It's all frozen up, iced up. Feels great. Everybody, I want to thank you all so very much for joining me for this adventure. This has been a ton of fun. Just what the inner wolf needed. I want to say a special thank you to all the Patreon donators for your help, for suggesting this type of trip. To the viewers, thank you all so very much for your support, comments, views, all that good stuff. Everybody is appreciated. Lots of gun videos coming up, Google. <laughs> I don't back down. I'll pump those videos out for free. <laughs> I've had so much fun on this trip. That owl has made this trip so special for me. Ran into him last night. He followed this morning, still with us, still following. That is pretty epic in my book. Coming up on the gate now, I see my car. Has it been towed? Yes! All right. All right, everybody. The adventure has come to an end. That was absolutely 
Awesome. That was awesome. It's about 10 degrees here. It was below zero up on top of the mountains. Wow. This was a really good trip. Thank you all so much for joining me for this adventure. On to the next. Now I have to drive home. Yeehaw. I'm sure that's going to be a mess. It wouldn't be so bad if there wasn't other drivers on the road, but that's how it goes. Strength and honor. See you guys around.